So welcome just... to Georgia. Okay, so no question round, right? Yeah, question time. Okay. Yeah. We have three minutes for questions. Don't see any. Should I start? Yeah, you can start it. No question. Yeah. Okay. So, um, hello, everyone. My name is. Oh, there is a, a question. Sorry. So, I'll give you a question time. Okay. Any of your robotics demos use ROS industry factors? Sure. Uh, we used the uh, calibration tool and the. Uh, uh, discard for a motion trajectory generation. So uh, Isaac, you are very known our uh, next stage robot. I have already discussed with you, with you. And then that source code will be also uh, public next week, probably. Uh, NTU will attend APC this year. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we have attended the first uh, Amazon Picking Challenging, and now we are collaborating with local companies to uh, build the real one. Hope it works in the uh, real warehouse. Uh, Radar will be released. Uh, we will put, upload our source code on GitHub. So uh, we will send the announcement when this project is ended. OK, George, I think you can start it. OK. Thanks. Um, so, hello everyone. My name is uh, Georg Hetner. I'm from um, the FZI in Karlsruhe in Germany. Uh, I posted the video I'm going to show beforehand in the chat so you can open it there. So, quickly, where I'm coming from, the FZI is a nonprofit research organization with about 150 scientific employees. And uh, we're something like an innovation hub for the Southwest southwest part of Germany and we focus mainly on technology transfer especially into small and medium-sized enterprises um, so I'm particular coming from the living lab service robotics where we do basically anything robotics um, but uh, we have much to do with field and service robotics so for example you can see down in the slides our six-legged walking robot or so space robots that can assemble themselves or some AGVs um, but also so industrial applications, like I will talk about now, um, or of course, client-specific robotic solutions. Um, for example, in the pictures down there, you can see uh, a large robot used for decontamination. So um, I'm going to talk about uh, our project, so what we do at the FZI, um, with the example of the RIA project. So uh, next up is the video, so I encourage you to start it on your own, and I will do it here. So I'll click on start now and talk just over it. I hope you see it the same as we do. So this video gives you um, a quick introduction into what the reapp vision actually is. So uh, in, this is an automotive use case done with uh, together with BMW. BMW. And uh, you see here that we have constructed an application um, into a solution, we call it, out of three different apps. And these apps are now um, transformed or, or transferred into an integration platform that is running ROS and doing the magic in the background. Um, of course, we have some kind of safety, but that is done with traditional safety, although we read out uh, all the data in ROS, of course. Um, now onto the real application scenarios. So um, 
we want to um, fix uh, insulation mat to door. So we have three steps. The first step is to identify which door we're dealing with, which is done with an RFID reader. The second one is to localize the door, in this case with a, a 3D vision camera from Fanuc. And the third part is doing the actual work where we press uh, with the Fanuc robot against the insulation mat to fix it uh, to the door. And um, the clue of Reapp now is that we want to easily change this application. So, for example, we don't have this fancy vision camera and we want uh, our visionist to have it as simple as this. To pick out this one app, which is doing the localization, and replace it with another, in this case, with a light bridge. And then again, we can deploy the solution. All of the parts which are um, the same as before will stay the same and uh, only the part that we actually wanted to replace, in this case, the door localization, will be handled differently. Um, and the interesting part is, although we are doing something completely different, the semantic meaning is actually the same. So in both cases, we are doing a door localization, no matter if we do it with a laser scanner or with a um, light barrier. Okay, I'm seeing that the uh, video playing in the screencast is going a little bit slower. So uh, yeah, Reap achieves this with semantics in the background and adding uh, model-driven engineering to the ROS part. So uh, I just wanted to focus quickly on the tools that we developed. So in Reap, uh, we've created the Reap Engineering Workbench, which is an Eclipse application consisting mainly of um, the component modeling tool, which allows you to use model-driven engineering tools. So basically, you describe what an app does. And this is, of course, extra effort to the usual ROS generation, um, but it gets better in the next step when you use the component code generation tool, which can then generate a complete ROS package out of the description that you've just given. So for example, you define the topics and all of the code stops for subscription or publication of these topics will be automatically generated. And um, of course, you have to still fill in the actual algorithm. And the third part is then the skill or solution modeling tool in which you can use these packages. And you see on the right, there are these little blue and red um, boxes. So each of those is an app and you can combine them together to generate a bigger app in our nomenclature. So um, what we actually do is creating a launch file in the background. And all of this is then executed on the integration platform. Uh, why should you care about this? In general, I think model-driven engineering is a good tool, especially to help beginners or people not an expert in a field um, to come to grips with this uh, quite complex area of robotics. Uh, it can also enhance the reusability of packages, which you wrote with quite some dedication. Um, and we tried it out in workshops with different people, especially with uh, system integrators and end users, which are not that familiar with coding. Uh, they kind of like the idea. And of course, it's not yet a finished product, um, but it's already quite stable version that you can use. And you can check it out at the project page at Rea Project. Uh, and we're also planning a full open source release in 2017 once we cleaned up some of the la, more ugly parts. So um, the second part I wanted to talk about is uh, actually one of the pilot demonstrators, uh, which you also seen in the in the video before. So we used a Fanoc M710 uh, for the insulation mat pressing, and we had to um, do control and sensing of various binary signals. So for example, extend a cylinder, retract a cylinder, uh, read out end switches and all of that. And we didn't want to use um, field bus interfaces because there were a couple of reasons uh, speaking against that, mainly availability. So we ask around and then uh, were led to uh, Sean who told us, well, there is a nice rep from Mr. Van der Horn who, uh, uh, which I read and I found it quite nice and we decided to implement it. So this uh, rep was written by him and we just uh, did some implementation on that. Um, so what it does is basically copying the behavior of the um, industrial robot client. So you have a robot specific um, site that which runs on the robot controller, in this case, a Carol program for the FANUC. You have um, an industrial IO client, which is based on the industrial robot client, just you would like you would have for uh, streaming motion commands. And you have the simple messages as communication format between them. And if we look at the architecture the picture of Ross Industrial, I hope this is still um, 
the latest one, then uh, you can see that we basically enhanced um, this ROS interface layer um, with a new interface in a similar way to the driver interface. Um, so the rep defines several profiles that you can use. You have uh, synchronous commands like the read and write or info commands, um, but also asynchronous um, transfer like where you subscribe to a specific I.O. and then get the publication message from the robot in a continuous stream. We were a little bit lazy and just implemented what we needed for our use case, which is uh, the synchronous calls and the asynchronous readout. Uh, so there are some restrictions. The code itself you can actually find uh, in the repository of one of my students, which also did most of the implementation work. Um, so this is a fork of industrial core where you can find, of course, the, the client itself and also the added I.O. Uh, messages and simple message format definitions. And down here you also have some implementation details if you're curious, because we unfortunately did not stick in all cases to the wrap. Um, which was sometimes a communication issue, sometimes a little bit of laziness. So in order for this to actually be merged or be useful for the for the mainline ROS industrial core, I think we'll have to do some cleanup work. But if you want to check it out beforehand, um, you can, of course, look into this. And just to give you a little idea about how it, how it actually works and how we implement it, it's, so this is um, the communication that you would see in the simple message format. So this is going down to the controller. And what's important here is the um, bold part. So you see that we actually have a quite a simple payload indicating a type, index, and the values. For example, write a digital output on pin 5 um, to the value 1. And we get a return value indicating that everything worked or didn't work if there was any error. And uh, the ROS API was kept quite similar to that. So we're keeping a quite low level interface, giving the user the power to actually decide what they want to do. So we also put some additional wrapper nodes in there, for example, like the binary IO write wrapper node, which then offers you a trigger service call. So just for convenience and to show you how to use it. And there are some restrictions, uh, like, for example, the subscription range can only be chosen at the startup. But I think this is quite easily fixable if we want to. Um, Okay, maybe just uh, our experience with this was very good. It worked really, really well for uh, the simple commands that we wanted to use, for example, like cylinders uh, and safety IOs and all the stuff. Um, and I think the overhead to implement it was actually not that big. So I can really recommend it if you have some simple application where you need it. So just quickly, some other projects. Um, I myself maintain two different um, repositories. Um, both are for Shunk hardware, the five finger hand, and also an LVA4P um, driver. It's a can open driver. We have some other projects like the Europe project where we develop a cat to path um, tools, force-based exploration, also the human brain project where we deal a lot with um, gazebo and other simulators. Um, and of course, we're using ROS uh, at all kinds of robotic research, uh, mainly for autonomous robots like our six-legged walking robot you see up uh, on the right. And um, also to really fastly integrate components. So big hit this year was our Bratwurst bot, which you see in the middle. And it only took us a couple of weeks, thanks to ROS, basically, because we had all the components in place, um, but also to integrate other stuff. So down here, you see a Raspberry Pi shaft in the in the base of a Shunk arm. Um, so all you need is 24 volts and are ready to go. So uh, that's it. I hope it didn't take too long and we have time for some questions. Uh, if you want to contact me, these are the details. and I'm happy to answer any question. Good. Any questions? Control speed rate of what? I if you mean for the for the Fanuc IO, um, I think we are running the node at thirty hertz, um, but it's I don't think that it is restricted to that. Um, I, to be honest, I'm I'm not sure. I didn't try to to maximize it. Um, the thirty hertz were more than enough. And if you run it on streaming mode, it will be quite um, not that resource hungry. Maybe uh, one thing I'll have to say is that we took the easy way out and used a second socket for the streaming. Um, 
So we are opening one socket to send the commands and receive the synchronous data. Um, I don't know if it's if I can go back to it. Yeah, so we, we have one socket here, um, one for the synchronous data and one for the asynchronous data, which is kind of the lazy way out um, but it helps, and we didn't have a shortage of TCP ports, um, so there wasn't any issue in going as high as we would like. Okay, please explain a little bit more about cat to path um, So I could do a whole talk about that, but I think I have a few minutes to spare. So um, in the Europe project, and also we use this for, for Reapp as well, so we had to uh, come up with a way to create quite complex trajectories in contact um, with, an, with an object. And what we did for that is that we, um, at the moment, have to apply a little bit of um, manual um, Cardo application and simulation video demonstrated physically. Yes. Uh, okay. So we have to apply a little bit of manual smoothing beforehand, and then we can load it up um, as Collada file basically in a web application where we use um, the ROS web tools and 3JS and stuff like that uh, to visualize it. And then uh, just use basically JavaScript to draw on it. As you can see here, the green line um, is drawn by placing these red. Um, triangles here and the triangles are projected on the surface and with that we can create um, trajectories which are in contact and quite complex uh, fitted with splines to the surface. I can maybe give a talk about that next time because it's a little bit more um, complicated and um, at the moment it's not open source uh, yet because we're currently still developing it um, and I don't know if there are any plans to put it open source in the near future. Um, but if you're really willing to contact me, if you really, really need it. Um, and the door application scenario was shown in reality on the Automatica 2016. It was shown uh, quite a long time. And um, I have videos of it, but they are not yet up on YouTube, but we are planning to put them on YouTube in the near future. So look out for that. Okay, good. Thank you, George.